There it is again, across the street. It's 3am and I can't sleep. The first night I caught it, it was purely an accident. I'd fallen asleep on my bed after a long shift and forgotten to close the blind. When I woke up in the middle of the night, there it was. I could see it through the window. A solitary light in the darkness. It was my neighbour's window, the house where I live. I live alone and there's a small back garden. Beyond that is a narrow lane that runs parallel to the houses and beyond that you can see the rear of the houses from the next street. So my window looks out across at the back of my neighbour's house. I don't know if it was because I was groggy or still overly tired that first time. But when I woke that night and saw the light on across the way, I, I felt uneasy about it. The area where I live is quiet, a, a leafy suburb, and it's, it's never caused me any worry. I mean, I grew up in a big city neighbourhood, and though I was never a fighter, I learned from an early age to watch my back. Not so with where I live now. It's safe. The type of place professional couples move to, to bring up kids. But, uh, that light, when I saw it, I'd say it broke the safety of where I live somehow. I tried to go back to sleep, but each time I opened my eyes, I could see that lonely yellow light out there. My mind started to wander and, and wonder. I started to think, you know, what was my neighbour doing at three o'clock in the morning? I don't, I don't know who lives there. I never really see them, to be honest. But then I work strange shifts at the hospital, so I guess I've never really been wired into the community the way some people are. I kind of come and go at strange times. That night I ended up pulling myself out of bed, grasping for the blind to close it. I just didn't want to see that light anymore. But just as my fingers touched the blind, and I must have come into view if my neighbour could have, could have even seen me in the dark, the light went out as soon as I touched the blind. I fell back asleep. Didn't really think of it in the morning. But the next night, the same thing happened. I woke up, glanced at my alarm clock and saw that it was 2.55am. What unnerved me, however, was that the blind, my blind was up. I was sure I'd pulled it down this time before going to sleep. At least my neighbour's light wasn't on this time. I, I could only see the darkness out there. It took me a few minutes to build up the energy to close the blind and when I did and my fingers touched the cord, the light across the way came on again. This time I looked closer than before what struck me was that my neighbour's window had no blinds and no curtains. I could see straight into what looked like a bedroom, not dissimilar to mine. In fact, pretty much exactly like mine. I suppose I shouldn't have been surprised, as most of the houses were built 30 or so years back, and all by the same construction company. But it struck me that, in some way, I was kind of looking at a mirror image of my home. There was a yellow incandescent bulb hanging from the ceiling, but there was no shade around it. In fact, the room itself was bare, just white walls, empty. I could see a door painted in glossy white, but it was closed, so I couldn't see further into the house. It felt strange that there was no one to be seen, no one there. 
I imagined that the occupant of the room was lying on a bed or mattress underneath the window and that was why I couldn't see them. But then, just as I thought that, the light switched off again. The weird thing was I knew where the light switch was for that room, if it was the same as mine, and I, I was pretty sure it was. I turned to look over my shoulder. In the dim green light from my alarm clock, I could see the outline of my light switch next to the door. I should have seen the person in the other room get up off the ground and switch theirs off because it would be in the same place, but I didn't. Turning to close my blind, I saw, for the briefest moment, someone standing in the window across the way. They pulled back as soon as I laid eyes on them, but I'm sure it was a man, pale in complexion, at least from the nearest street lamp in the back lane. And he was bald, maybe in his forties or so. One thing I was certain of was that he was still looking at me. But from the darkness of the room, it was like he was using it as a, as a shield so that I couldn't see him. I could just barely make out his outline standing there, definitely watching me. I... I felt uneasy about it and didn't want the guy to think I was spying on him, so I quickly closed the blind and lay back down in bed. Sleep eventually came, though I kept wondering about the light switch and how the man had been able to switch off the bulb. The next day was a Saturday, it was my day off. Most of my friends have settled down, so I was, once again, spending the weekend by myself. It's not so bad, uh, most of the time, a little lonely maybe. I grabbed some beer and uh, I sat up until around 2.30 in the morning, watching nonsense on YouTube. Time got away from me as it normally does, but it was more than that. I didn't want to go to bed. I couldn't quite figure out why, but the thought of that window with the light on, the man standing in that room watching me, I, I just didn't want to have to deal with that for another night. I nearly slept on the couch, but I gave myself a shake and chastised myself for being so easily frightened. Leaving the living room, I headed into my hall and to the foot of the stairs to the bedroom when I heard something. It took me a moment to figure out what it was. I strained my ears in the silence. When I finally recognised the sound, it became obvious to me that someone was in my bedroom. And that person, they were slowly pulling the cord to the blind. I could hear the materials of the blind moving ever so slightly and the audible squeak that the blind let out when being rolled up, followed by a click. My heart raced. Like I said, I'm no fighter and living alone I didn't have anyone to protect, so I grabbed my mobile phone and headed straight out of the front door into the street. Running through my front garden, I then stood behind a neighbour's car phoning the police. I told them someone was in my house and that they'd broken in. I was advised to stay where I was and wait for a police car to arrive, which I did, but the entire time I never once took my eyes off of my house. No one came out. When the police arrived, they went in, but it only took them two minutes to search my house and come back outside. There's no one there, sir, they said. For some reason, only one response came to me. I asked them if the blind in my room was up or down. It's up, they said. I told them I'd left it down. 
Then I mentioned my neighbour across the way and I had a feeling that he had something to do with it. Maybe he went out to the back of my house while I was in the street. The two police officers looked at each other. When they asked me if I had been drinking, it was clear they didn't believe me. The funny thing is, they asked me if I wanted them to go knocking on my neighbour's door to ask about the disturbance. And I said no. Deep down I had this horrible fear that somehow that would anger him. I know it doesn't make sense, but then none of this really does. The police went on their way. I slept downstairs for the rest of the night. This then takes us to last night. I made sure that the doors and windows to my house were all locked. Then I grabbed a knife from my kitchen and headed to my bedroom. I kept the knife under my bed just in case whoever had been there the night before decided to show their face again. I'm not really sure what I would have done with the knife, but it certainly made me feel better having it. I pulled the blind down and finally nodded off to sleep around one. My eyes opened to not a sound but the end of a sound, like something had just happened and I only caught the last second of it. It was a click. Opening my eyes, I saw immediately that the blind was up. The sound I had heard, I'm certain, was the click as the blind finished its upward motion. I sat up slowly and looked around the room. I was alone. But there was the alarm clock with its familiar display, 2.59am. I got up and moved cautiously to the window. The window across the way was dark, but I could just about see something. Something standing there in the room. It was the outline of the man with the bald head I had seen. I was sure of this. I, I turned to the alarm clock and as I did, it flicked to 3am. I knew then that something had changed. Turning back to the window, what I saw completely eradicated any sense of rationality I had left. The room light was on, but instead of Yellow, the light it gave off was a deep red, like the kind you see in an old photo development room. It was red, though for a different reason. Standing underneath it was the man with the bald head. He had his back to me, and his elbow was moving back and forward. Back and forward again and again in a sort of judder though I couldn't see what he had in his hands I knew that the motion was the same as someone sawing through something back and forward back and forward the light bulb above him was covered in blood I saw the pale hand of a second person I think it was a woman's, reaching out from a position on the floor, grasping at the man's leg and then falling out of view. I felt helpless and all I could think of was to open my window and shout stop at the top of my voice. And he did stop. The sawing motion of his elbow ceased. He turned slowly to look over his shoulder but just as he made eye contact with me the light went out i scrambled for my phone and called the police i told them i just witnessed a murder but i think i think you probably know where this is going the police visited the house and found nothing 
I even watched from my own room as they turned on the light from across the way and looked around. The room was empty. There was no blood. Nobody. No man with the bald head. Nothing. The police came back to my door and told me that everything seemed fine. They even chastised me for wasting their time. Two nights in a row. I was told not to call back on the third. I barely slept the rest of the night, but in the morning I did a little research of my own. I I put the street address for the house across the way into Google. It didn't take long for me to find it. Terminally ill man murders family. The headline said it all. Thomas Chambers was his name. Twelve years previous, he had been diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumour. Most people said he was a good man up until that point, but something must have snapped inside of him. He butchered his wife and kid, then hung himself in that room. I'll bet it was at 3am. His suicide note was apparently rambling, but... The press focused on one phrase he had written in it. I'm taking them all with me. There's a reason I never see anyone at that house. No one lives there. No one wants to live there. And I can understand why. But you know what? I'm glad. Because there's something in that place still. And I've seen it. I think it wants to be seen, to be honest. That's why it pulled up my blind, so I could watch. I couldn't help myself tonight. Here I am, looking out through my window. Morbid fascination, I guess. The light came on at 3am, but then it went off. Nothing to report but an empty room. Maybe, maybe the murder plays out like a loop. Um... I'm thinking of getting a camera to see if I can capture anything there. Maybe I could (laughs) sell the footage to someone. I do wonder if... Hold on. The light has come on across the way. But it makes no sense. It... It looks like my room. Oh, God. I... I think there's someone in my house.